Hello there, we've got a brilliant fixture shopped up for you here. A Newcastle kickoff now. It's number five, spraying it forward. And they're immediately scrapping about. A proper Northeast derby for you. Well, this should be an exciting game. I know Durham. Yeah. Sorry. I know Durham did lose the last one, um, but this looks to be an exciting game. Yeah, and we've got the lineup for you. When there's a nice little break in play, we'll get it out to you. It's the goalkeeper there, George Arnold, throwing it forward. Settling it down. Number 11 goes down, keeps it. Oh, Newcastle looking strong. Yeah, it looks to be a scrappy affair, this one. Yep. George Arnold plays it forward. Now we've got Freddie Merritt on the ball. Looking towards the winger, number seven. But it's number one who picks it up for Newcastle. And we'll get the line up to you, out, out to you now. We've got George Arnold in net for Durham. On, on the right, it's Jack Kamada. Freddie Merritt at centre-back, alongside Matt Keogh. There's Ollie England at left-back. In the midfield, there's Jack Gibbons, who's the captain for tonight. Max and Garagic. Rob White. Zach Alfalahi. Oh, oh. Uh, it's picked up by the Newcastle goalkeeper. Sorry about that. Uh, Tom <laughs> Close call. <laughs> yeah. Tom Hizzet and uh, Finn Gwilliam up front. So, what do you think we've got in store tonight, Davina? I'm excited. This looks to be an exciting game. Both sides seem to be charged up. Um, it's a derby, so, I mean, what more could you want on a Wednesday night? No, they have been raring to go from the start. We've been watching them warm up just before we did our little bit of punditry <laughs> post-match for the women's. The crowd's still building up. Here we have it now, Newcastle looking to attack. Newcastle, who are currently in second place in the league. However, they missed out on the title after stealing one that after a 3-3 draw against Durham last week with Durham having been 3-1 up at half-time and still coming back into the game. But Durham are, as you may have seen before, looking looking to stay up. This is a massive fixture, isn't it? <laughs> it <laughs> is. Yeah. I, was gonna, I was just going to say, both teams look aggressive right out of the, right from the kickoff. Um. Yeah, they're looking to settle down now. Bringing it inside. Ah, trying to slip it through. Oh, the Newcastle come out and now they look to break. Straight on it is Jack Gibbons there. Yeah, the game doesn't seem to be settling down whatsoever. No, not at all. <laughs> well, I think it's, I think we're in for we're in for a for a roller coaster of a match. No, yeah, it's going to be a scrappy one. <laughs> uh, see who can get a grip on the match, but it doesn't look likely at the moment. That one goes out for a throw in after a bit of a tumble and a pull. Yeah, on the bench tonight, there's Morgan Lant, Ruben Bull, who is the club captain for uh, DUAFC. There's Ned Ventum, Ira Albany, and Rory England, whose brother is at left back tonight, Ollie England. So it's a bit of a family affair going on. <laughs> it must be cool to have your brother play on the same team as you. Oh, yeah, I can imagine plenty of arguments going on there. <laughs> <laughs> Here we have a Newcastle throwing on the left. No chances of note so far. As both look to try and you know, find find something in the match, some sort of foothold. Oh. No breakthroughs yet, <laughs> no. as of yet. <laughs> Chasing it down now, and it got a bit scrappy there. Number eleven. Now it's at the other end. Number nine for Newcastle. Looking to cut inside. But Matt Keogh, who is coming back from an ACL injury, pops it out for a corner. And he's got quite quite the career tra trajectory, Matt Keogh. Um, he's 23 years old, Collingwood, and it's his first game back after 16 months out with an ACL injury. He's well, played so professionally before as well, hasn't he? He's, yep, so yeah. he's definitely looking for a win, or at least a good game to come back from that injury. No, yeah, I can't imagine after that yeah. long out how it feels. A lot of hard work that's gone in there, so definitely. it's an impressive achievement. Yeah, he's played professionally before in Australia and Sweden, so... Yeah, Interesting places. Interesting yeah. <laughs> places to have played professionally. Good calibre to have as well. Definitely. He's gone out for another corner here for Newcastle. As things look to temper down slightly. George Arnold is in gold for Durham today, tonight. Yeah. Just 19 years old from Jon Snow. And four starts of the season. 
No, yeah, it's an interesting one because you'd expect the goalkeeper to play every game, but there has been a topsy-turvy season for Durham so far. They do find themselves bottom at the moment. Yep. And now Newcastle look to attack through number seven. Who crosses it to the back post. No one's there. It's headed away. Oh. There's an ambitious overhead kick, but mm. it heads towards the River Weir. And we settle down <laughs> for another goal kick for George Arnold to take. And they've got a replacement ball quickly as Durham look to try and secure three points, which will be massive at the moment as the league stands. I mean, they have had quite a, quite a difficult start to the season, I would say. Right, Durham men? They did have quite a few injuries and then, you know, it kind of makes it hard to get into the swing of things when, you know, people are getting injured all the time. But, yeah, what do you think? No, yeah, they've also got a game in hand, which, yeah, that is massive for the league standings. A league which only has six teams in it. Every game matters. Every point matters. They've got that next game is going to be on the 1st of February against Loughborough. 3 p.m. kickoff at Maiden Castle. So if you're watching this now and you're impressed, head down, support the lads as they look to stay up. Definitely. We do have a big crowd tonight as well. Oh, yeah, it's starting to bustle. Maiden Castle's bar is open. <laughs> the pints are flowing. The banter, sort of. <laughs> uh, we had a cheerleader show before, which you may have seen. It's really riled them up. Definitely getting that energy up. Yeah. Oh, there's a bit of a contest there. It looks like Newcastle won a free kick on the right after Ollie England went racing in but didn't come out with the ball. Could this be where there's a breakthrough? I wonder. Uh, potentially. Newcastle, however, their away form isn't too good. They've got no wins away from home. I think oh. only one draw. Only one draw. Oh, that's an interesting oh, yeah. statistic. Yeah, it looks like it's something that's held them back from challenging Sterling for the title, which has already been settled. Now, number three looks to play it in back post. There's a lot of curl on it, but George Arnold comes out and it's a free kick anyway. He's calling for his players to calm down slightly. There's a look to try and get, as I said before, a foothold in this match, which will be difficult. But, you know, <laughs> you never know what you could happen You never know, in the exactly. Derby. I was just going to say that. You never know what could happen. They play it forward, but Newcastle come out with another header. It has been a bit like that, up in the air, raring to go, but not much football being played. There's oh. high pressure here. Oli England looks to chase him down, goes back to the goalkeeper. And there's Finn Gwillem coming down. Newcastle in possession. They, they look composed look on the ball, don't they? They do. Here comes Jack Gibbons carrying it out, but he's, oh, he's broken apart. Now Newcastle looks to overturn and take advantage of that. And it's another free there's kick as number two races down. in. Yep. Yeah, we don't want it to descend into some sort of fracas. <laughs> it looks likely to, and well, there's no stopping it in a northeast derby. Well, the night is still young. Uh, well, we'll see if the chance comes through this either. Oh. Hopefully the referee keeps control throughout the night because we've seen too many, too many games like that descend into chaos. Yeah, we want a nice clean game tonight. <laughs> yeah, we want some football. <laughs> yeah. It's played in now, it's whistled in, but it's cleared easily by Durham and they look to break. However, it's stopped. No. Header after header, number eight comes forward. It appears to have gone out for is it a goal kick. It's a goal kick, much to Durham's relief. Both sides seem really eager tonight. No, yeah, they're definitely up for it. Lots of scrappy challenges, no mm -hmm. one pulling out. Yep. Lots of goal kicks as well, as it seems to be flying <laughs> around. Yeah. Maybe we'll see a more composed midfield further on, further on in the game. We'll hope to, but Durham don't want to concede here. That's the last thing they need. Their precarious position in the league. Now number seven looks to break forward, but Durham's number eight, Max Angaragic, comes out with the ball, but it come, goes out for a throw in the end anyway. Max Angaragic, Cuffs, 20 years old and a sports science student, much like many of this side. He hails from the Czech Republic and he's, had, he's started every single game this season, so... That is an impressive, impressive statistic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they've definitely used him to the maximum. And now Durham look to break. Oh. He's number seven, Rob White. He's been brought down as a free kick. 
Referee looks to assert his authority with a yellow card for the Newcastle left back as he raced back. And they'll hope to make a chance out of this. Rob White, who, <laughs> as it happens, is a Platinum Sport contributor. He writes some brilliant football articles. Good shout out. So let's see if his football is just as good. He's a versatile player by his own description. He can play all along the right. And he looks to be rapid on that right wing. He does. This could be Durham's big break. Let's hope so. We've got some big bodies in the box. They're lining up. They look ready for it. Just need a good ball coming in there from... And it looks, looks to be number two, Jack Kramada taking. Collingwood Sports Science, just like Max and Garagic. And he comes from the Isle of Man. I've heard he's the best thing to come out of the Isle of Man since Mark Cavendish. So we'll, we'll see how much he fares to that billing. It's all set now, under the floodlights. Waiting for the referee's whistle. The atmosphere is tense. And it's blown. Here we go. It's whipped in. Durham racing in. Ah, oh, just a missed it opportunity. Evades all those heads. Goes out for what appears to be a throw in. Just in that far corner. Some players stay stay up. However, we do see Matt Keo go back. Ollie England's racing to take this throw in. They really need something here, Durham. Here we go, oh, to all the England, races into the box. He seems oh. to be pushed. Number six for Newcastle, wins the challenge and plays it off his legs for a goal kick. Protest for a penalty after two arms were thrown up by the Newcastle defender, but nothing's forthcoming. To no avail. No. <laughs> the crowd don't seem too disappointed, though. The drink's keeping them occupied. Newcastle look to calm things down here, change the momentum in their favour. Game management will be integral in a northeast derby. Yeah, I mean you don't want to come off too strong right out right out the gates, right? You wanna you wanna maintain the momentum as you said. Mm. Um kind of carry that out throughout the game. Oh yeah, you don't want to wear yourself out too early. And the ball seems to fly towards one of our cameras, off the scaffolding and back towards the rear wheel. So it's now a Durham throw in near the near the halfway line. It's taken quickly to Jack Gibbons who turns his turns around his man. Now it's inside, it's Durham look to attack, but again, it's Intercepted. squashed by Newcastle. We seem to clamp down on every Durham attack at the moment. All England pick it up, but the high pressure's coming. Ooh. Plays it forward, but it runs just out, and Tom Hizzett can't make it. Tom Hizzett, who also scored in the reverse fixture. He's got five books goals this season. And he's been an integral part of the Durham side, who do find themselves at the bottom of the table as it stands. For Newcastle, Newcastle throw in. Yeah. <laughs> Newcastle in there. I don't know if it's red, if it's orange. The floodlights don't really. Yeah, I'm not quite well. sure. I'm not quite sure what this away kit is um, meant to be. It's a bit of a Dutch spin, bit of an English spin. <laughs> yeah. Somewhere in between. It's played forward to number nine. He stops his run. Macchio watches the ball roll out slowly on that far side for a goal kick. That George Arnold will hope to take. It's played along the ground as Durham looked to build an attack through football, not hoofball. <laughs> Sprayed into the middle. There's Can Durham find some there. space here? Ooh, Ooh, that one raced into the challenge there, the Newcastle defender, looking not to make contact with his man. Now it's number two, oh, plays Newcastle. it forward, but it again bounces out for a throw in on that left side for Durham. I feel like Durham just needs to find that space to get into the ball. It has been drive it forward, now, hasn't it? It's Definitely. Really clamping down. However, they do look to spread it wide here. Rob White picking up on the ball. Goes inside, finds his man almost, and it races through and out for a goal kick. The testing, the pressing, but nothing, nothing is coming at the moment. Yep, both sides, both wanting to make that first goal. Break, breakthrough. Uh, hoping for no stalemate because a win here would be massive for Durham who would see themselves move above above fifth place in the table and slowly creeping out of that relegation zone. Definitely, and I think a win would definitely do wonders for momentum for the team as well going forward, I think. 
No, especially in the penultimate game as well. There's 10 years plus history in this top Aldi pr Premier North division. They don't want to lose that. Loughborough will be a tough game, as it was last season in the charity match, which Durham came out as 3-2 winners. Hopefully they can carry that carry that on tonight. Yeah, it's a good tradition to have when you've got the <laughs> crowd in front of you. Yeah. Love performing for the cameras here, Durham. Durham nice with the ball. forward. Oh. looked to make the run, but the ball just had too much on it, and it goes out for a goal kick to Newcastle. It's a cold, shivery night tonight. We're wrapped up in our <laughs> blankets, aren't we? Yes, I wish I had gloves. I was not prepared for the, how cold it was going to be. Oh, I think I've left my gloves in my bag, so it's, yeah. Not too well prepared, but we will bring you the best coverage we can here at PAL TV. As we shiver away, yeah, as we shiver <laughs> chatter away. away. We try not to chatter too, but yeah. Ooh, Durham seems to be in are, possession. Durham, trying to get, trying to get a spell on the ball. They pushed it, it forward. Forward. There we go. It, in the box. In the box. On oh, it. Just it's just behind Tom. Is it goes out for a corner. Durham. Hopefully. Hopefully can capitalise on this. They're having lots of joy on that right side and it's something they're exploiting again and again and again. Definitely. And they will keep doing it, will not they? <laughs> yes, I hope they do. I mean, I hope this is a sign of what's to come. That looked very promising. Newcastle, they do seem to be formidable in defence at the moment. Lots of composure. Racing back for all these counter-attacks. It's going to be an in-swinger from Durham here. It's taken in. Just kept out. Beaten away. Heading back in. A bit of ping pong going on here. A great Good pass. Yeah. Now it's Jack Gibbons who picks up on it, trying to get something on the ball for Durham. Oh, Kamada almost, almost misses oh. out there, but it's brought forward for Newcastle's number nine. Yeah, it's brilliantly recovered there by the Durham defence. Durham oh. still in possession here. Yeah, Keo bringing it out to the right, but it goes out for the throw in. Referee's, uh, referee's whistle went. I'm not too sure why. With someone. It's in Durham's favour regardless. It must have been an offside. Yeah, I was just going to say that. So George Arnold will take this free kick. And Durham will hope to rebuild some form of attack. You know, Newcastle aren't a shabby side whatsoever. I hope they've been in great form. No, they can definitely hold their own. No, yeah. In the reverse fixture, it finished 3-1 in uh, Newcastle's favour. And Tom Romani, who started tonight, he scored a brace in that game. So Durham will be hoping to keep him quiet, but there are no guarantees. As the ball is blasted out, <laughs> definitely in the River Weir this time. So let's hope <laughs> no one's rowing or canoeing. <laughs> it, um, it's Durham, so you never know. Someone right, might be uh, out there. So someone will definitely be going to try and pick that up <laughs> after the game. <laughs> Free football. There are some lights shimmering, so I hope it didn't hit any dog walkers going about. Oh gosh, no. I or at least know. not the dogs. Oh no, not the dogs. The dogs would love that, to be honest. Uh, getting the teeth, sinking it into it. Uh, I don't know it's why you're going through dog walk in this weather anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it is very chilly tonight. It Hopefully is. it won't impact the football too much, and it doesn't look to be so far. No, it looks very, very exciting. I don't know how they're not cold. They're just in shorts and a t-shirt. It's that rigorous warm up we saw during the women's game. We and the adrenaline. Nets. Yeah, and, and the, the adrenaline. adrenaline. It is a massive match. They can't pull out of anything in this game. As Durham look to go forward, and it's almost picked up there by Finn Gwillem, who scored two goals in the last fixture against Sterling, that 3-3 draw, and he'll be hoping to continue that great vein of form tonight. His it looks to pick up on it, but it spins away, and Newcastle, Newcastle. try breaking, but it's composed at the back by Matt Keogh. Now, Durham with possession though. Plays it forward. And it has gone. And it's number 10 who's played it out. Zach Al Falahi. He has two goals to his name in the books league this season. He's Hillbees, 18 years old and a math student. So he's got a lot of work on his hands with that. He knows the numbers. <laughs> he's also started every game this season again. So it's a consistent Impressive start. side. Yep. Consistent side. I think that's what you need as well. Having that many injuries so early on in the season, a few players who've played consist consistently throughout the season, I think definitely helps team morale as well. And here we go, Al Halali bringing it forward on his left foot. He looks to slip it through to, oh. he's come through. Oh, number 11, Tom Hizzett, oh, had a brilliant chance there, but it was a snapshot. 
No, and that was a great chance there for Durham. I don't know whether it's too presumptuous to say Durham are knocking on the door. They are knocking on the door. Trying to bash <laughs> it down if they can. Tom Hizzett with a great chance there. They'll be ruined that. Newcastle throw in. Hopefully it won't keep him up tonight. But it looks like the crowd is starting to build up and respond to chances like that. It's something that they need to start roaring along the lads. Yeah, I can almost feel the agitation in the air. Everyone's on the edge of their seat at this point. It is massive. And they have paid a decent amount of money to come here for sport and action. Yes, Great for cause. a very good cause. The Zambia did stay in uh, Durham during the summer before the Commonwealth game. So there are strong ties there. Definitely, definitely a good cause if anybody would want to come down and watch. We yeah. do have lots of football left. So make your way down to MC. Yeah, you may as well grab a pint, grab your friends, grab a drink, any drink. Any drink. Donate your money. It's not quite live, eh, but it'll do. Rob White bringing it forward here, racing. He's got the afterburners on. He looks to clip it this towards the back a post. And it's a brilliant goal there by Tom Hizzett what in the back goal. post. Who what nods down and takes the lead for Durham. Clean and composed. Clean and composed. That is what Rob we want. Rob White with a brilliant ball into the back post. Tom Hizzett was there expecting Ollie England behind him, but Tom wasn't missing that one. And this is definitely the breakthrough that we were looking for, oh, we were hoping definitely. for. Definitely. The crowd are up on their feet and they're going, they're going. They love that, don't they? Oh, they do. And that's Tom Hizzett. He now has six book skulls to his name. The Collingwood striker, 22 years old, and he is the talisman for this Durham side. As you can see there, Rob White running through. What a pass in. Brilliant header. Keeper had no chance. Brilliant finish as well. Now, let's see if Newcastle can respond to this. 1-0 to Durham in this North East derby. Hopefully Durham can build on that momentum and continue that throughout the game. And it looks to be. Their they're tails are up. The pressure's up. The adrenaline hopefully. is pumping. <laughs> yeah, hopefully not too much. We don't want to see any cards as Ollie England seems to snap at the heels of number Ooh. two for Newcastle, who has gone down. It seems to be an ankle injury, but play continues on this left side. The ref doesn't seem to be blowing that whistle. Hopefully he's okay. No, play continues here, and it is on the right. Gwillen picks up on it. Great challenge by the Newcastle midfielder, number eight. Two players down there. Two players, but they seem Just to be a collision. Okay. Number two is... He's gone back on his, his back, not back on his back. <laughs> back on his <laughs> He's back gone his back, back down. Yeah. So there may be a bit of a brief stoppage here. Hopefully he's okay. Yeah, it seemed to be an ankle injury. No malice involved. It was only England chasing down the ball. All, All in the danger. name of sport. Yeah. All in the name <laughs> of football. Yeah. <laughs> ref the ref just running down. over. He's getting up. That's a good sign. Yep, seems to be okay. Yeah, seems to calm things down after that goal, which we're not sure if Durham will want that. What do you think? I don't know. I think they'd want to build on that momentum, get the adrenaline pumping some more, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it seems to be the joy down the right side should continue, so it won't be too difficult for them to break forward. As they look to do again, however, Newcastle play it forward. It's picked up by Durham, Durham again, just down kicking the right it up. side. It's a great header down, but off a line. Oh. He can't get it under his feet. Newcastle with possession again. Here we go, it's a scrap with uh, Matt Keogh going in there, and he comes out with the ball. The crowd reacting to that. Durham does win that. Ole England plays it forward. Gullen chasing it down, can't pick up on it, but again it comes towards him. Jack Gibbons with the back, hand in his back, but it's offside anyway, the referee decides. And it's a free kick to Newcastle on the right side. On the other hand, Newcastle are wanting to make this an equal game. They'll be they'll be on their on their feet trying to get that first goal. And there's some great players in the side as the Newcastle strikers brought down and there seems to be a bit of fracas going on there with the number 17 bit for of Newcastle a... pushing and shoving. Not what you want to see, but again, no, it is definitely a not. The, the crowd crowds are on their it. feet. <laughs> yeah, the crowd, the crowd do it. love it. <laughs> Referee brings number 17 over. We'll see if any cards result out of this. Didn't seem to be too much in it at the start. However, spirits are high. I think tensions are definitely high as well. It's kind of built up throughout throughout this first half. And the, a lot of the players will be reacting to the crowd as well, trying to show off, show what they've got. Definitely trying to build off that energy.
The referee's still having a word there with the number 17. The assistant referee's also on the pitch, but things seem to have simmered down, so I'm not too sure why. Maybe just a show face. Yeah, something to do. <laughs> Earn his money. <laughs> and it's a yellow card there for the Newcastle number 17. Durham come out with a free kick on the edge of the box, which the goalkeeper's ready to take. Yep. Doesn't seem too happy the number 17, but... No, I guess they'll I mean, have to put up with a decision like that. There's nothing I guess too so. much you can do after a yellow card. Do you think that's well-deserved, or do you think that's a bit harsh? Well, with the reaction, it was unnecessary, so, yeah, I'd say it's deserved. Yeah. yeah he'll be ready to pay his £10 fine after that as well. <laughs> Missing out on the pints page match. Someone else is going to have to buy him those pints. Yeah, let's hope there's no Durham players after that. Both teams looking to get back into position for this a long stoppage so hopefully it's not frozen the legs up too much <laughs> yeah we can hear some shouting from the pitch yeah, players Matthew. trying to trying to get that momentum up and Matthew Pennington there number four for Newcastle their captain he's played for England universities before commanding his side to get back in it let's see if Durham allow that but I doubt it after this performance so far And finally, the free kick is taken onto the right side. Challengers flying. Oh, Newcastle managed to keep it up the pitch. And number nine brings it under, under control, but Jack Gillies is there. It's taken off him, number 17. No Running down that. Ensuing from the uh, crowd after his yellow card. And it's gone out again towards the River Weir. Fun fact, Durham is surrounded on all three sides by rivers. Did you know that? By Are they all the same river? I'm not sure, actually. I should probably take up on cold. that. Yeah, you may as well check. Bit of geography for you there. <laughs> you geographers out there, get Comment. away from your colouring books. <laughs> <laughs> listen, to, <laughs> listen to the video. Listen to PAL TV, tune <laughs> yeah. in, come to MC, show your support. And Durham looked to bring it forward through his it, but it's a stoppage by the referee. Much of the frustration halting momentum they don't want too much of those stoppages do they no they don't i think this break in momentum will definitely will definitely hit the durham team because they just want to continue playing don't they build off of that first goal of course when you're at home your tails are up you don't want these stoppages but newcastle seem to be succeeding in that game plan i'm not sure if it's deliberate or not but it's helping them and it's smash forward here And Newcastle come out with it again on the second ball. Jack Gibbons seems to be everywhere, picking up on it. And now again Durham he comes forward, chipping it forward towards Goylem, but it's picked up by Pennington, who with his left foot smashes it forward towards 17. And again, there's a challenge by number two for Durham, Jack Kamada. Newcastle looking strong here, creating some space. Number 10 spreads it out wide to number two. Little dink forward for number 10 again. And Durham are on it, and they clamp down on that attack. What do we think of the Durham defence today? They've been solid so far. Let's hope it continues. Plays like Matt Keogh coming back from that injury. I mean, I'm not sure how he's doing it. I know. You couldn't tell that he was out for so long, can you? I know. He's calm and composed at the back, so you can see that he's got that professional experience. Definitely. And again, there's a stoppage. Much of the frustration of the crowd who seem to have calmed down slightly since the goal. Brilliant finish by Tom Hizzett. Nice little header at the back post has been the highlight of the match so far. It's been a yellow card for number 17 for Newcastle. And yeah, we've had an exciting first half so far. But Lots of things happening. Well, lots of, yeah, yeah. But those are the two standout moments as Newcastle look to attack. They have it in the box for number 17. Tries beating his man, but he's unsuccessful. It's brought forward towards Grillen, but again, there's a stoppage by the referee whose whistle is getting a very, very rigorous workout so far. <laughs> he does love his whistle, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. Well, if you're paying for it, you may as well use it, get your money's worth. <laughs> Goalkeeper George Arnold with his hands on his hips, doing his best Jordan Pickford impression. <laughs> Frustrated at all these stoppages. It's not to face much so far, but Newcastle are capable of knocking on the door. Definitely, they have showed potential. They have been making some breakthroughs, at least in the midfield, creating some space. Lofted towards the strikers here. Gwillem challenges, beats his man who goes down to the ground and it's a free kick in Newcastle's favour as a result. Number eight protest, but he's got the free kick, so we're not sure why. And Pennington will take. Kitted out in his traditional black and white Adidas boots. 
Definitely leather there. Classic, classic, classic boots. Nice and traditional. <laughs> you can tell us the centre back. And it rolls out for a Newcastle throwing on this right side. Deep into Durham's half. They'll hope they can conjure up something as a result. Here we are, number seven picks up on it. And he lofts it towards the back post. It's headed away by Kamada. Penny no, it's not Pennington, it's number six already. It's heads towards it. Durham looked to break. And Ollie England somehow gets There's the a bit of a the scrap there, yep. But it's picked up anyway by, by the Newcastle number seven. Again attacking down this right side, looking to break into the box. And he does, he plays it in. Number 17 can't control it. And Durham looked to break away. Again it comes towards it. It's a but hot to no shot avail. There by the Newcastle midfield. Not really troubling the goalkeeper, but... No, I was going to say, George is having a good time right at the net, right over there. Yeah, it's a sign of intent, sign of intent. Just 19 years old as well. Must be a lot of pressure for him. Oh, yes. Being in goal, men's, for, men's first team. Standing around doing nothing for a while <laughs> as well. I mean, it'll be freezing. Hopefully he's got a bit of meat on him to keep him warm, but, you know, 19 years of age, there's only so much you can do. Those, those gloves will definitely help. I'm a bit jealous, actually. Yeah, he'll be used to walk, trekking up the hill towards Jon Snow. That'll have, uh, put some sort of fire in his belly. <laughs> definitely I mean, get that cardio workout in. Yeah, oh, of course. We can't really see his calves, but I can imagine they're quite big <laughs> as a result. I will take your word for it. <laughs> Walking up that hill is dreadful. And now it's throwing towards the Durham right. It goes out still in on that far side. Difficult to see where the line is with the boardings being so close. And again, it's bashed towards the dugouts. Pack. Hopefully past our camera. Yes. Our very expensive, <laughs> very expensive kit. Camera. <laughs> Don't want any damage occurring to that because at PAL TV, we do want to provide you with the best coverage. The best quality content. <laughs> of course, if you want to see more of it, you can always subscribe. Jerem here Gibbons with possession again. Plays it back. Wise decision. And Matt Keogh looks to bring it forward. Plays it back to Jack Kamada. Down it to the, the right, right side. But it is intercepted by the Newcastle defence. Ollie England looking to pick up on this 50 50. He does. Sprays it forward to Al Falahi. Brings it forward on his left foot. But that's a oh, great sliding challenge by the Newcastle midfield. And it's played out to the right here and booted forward. Compost header there by Matt Keogh. It goes out for a throw in. Things look to calm down once more. 1 0 still to Durham. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Durham do look a bit worried on that back end though. Newcastle seem to be coming closer and closer to potentially breaking through, scoring an equaliser. What do you think? I'd say so. They've got that about them, especially Tom Romani up front. And if Durham look jittery, Newcastle will exploit it. So they'll hope, hopefully, hopefully, calm things down. And again, it is number 17 picking up on it. He's fighting, he's scrapping for the ball, but he'll have to be careful here because he could get a card. But it goes in uh, Newcastle's favour with this decision. It's a free kick on around the 35-yard line. Number 10 picks up the ball. He looks to be taking it. See if it's a cross come shot in this sort of situation. Do you think there will be a chance forthcoming? I don't know. They do look quite strong and they have been closing in so far. But they have come quite close and then missed. So I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll wait and see. Number three also looking over it. So they've got an option on the right and left foot here. Out swinger, in swinger. Newcastle look to make a chance either way. And it is the number three to take. Aiming towards the back post, it's curling. Ooh. And it's a chance, but it's not a goal. We have seen a lot of those lately, a lot of chances. Not not many goals, though. No, not many goals. <laughs> Still 1-0 to Durham here in what is a massive match as they look to maintain their position in the Bucks Northern Premier League, sponsored by Aldi. Great supermarket. We love Aldi. Yeah, we, we love we Aldi. Do. We do. Not quite got Lidl's Bakery, but... They don't have... Um... You know how Tesco does like the meal deals? Do, does Aldi do that? I believe Stupid so. question, I'm, I'm not never, sure. I'd, yes, they do, but it's not as good. Not as good. We all love a bit of market square Tesco. This is Newcastle look to bring forward on the left. Rob White <laughs> brings his man down. And the man he has brought down looks to chase down the ball as things get slightly scrappy here. Yep. Quillen looks to break forward, but it is Another a man down. sliding tackle there on the left side by the Newcastle defender. And there does seem to be a lot of shouting. It does seem to be getting a bit heated. Swarming around the referee. It's not what you want to see, but when when, uh, <laughs> when the atmosphere is high like this, yeah, you yeah, can't you, really stop it, can you? Exactly. And when you've got the crowd behind you, I mean, you kind of, you feel like you're on top of the world, don't you? So you want to show, you want to show your best game. Oh, of course, you're gunning for it. You want it, don't you? You're not going to pull out. Oh, 
it appears to be a free kick here. Referee having a word with Jack Kamada on that right back position. Really Could this be, be another chance for England, you think? Uh, not England, sorry. <laughs> <Darren>. <laughs> and we do have only England at left back, so it could be a chance for England. He did seem to be lurking behind Tom Hizzet, who did score that free, uh, that header earlier at the back post. He'll be hoping to get another one here as Kamada whips it in. Another ball Towards in. Good ball in. Post, and it's headed away by the Newcastle defence, and the referee blows for a free kick. Not too sure why, but the most I did not see why, there. yeah. Referee seems to be whistle happy so far. Pennington takes it quickly towards the right back. Newcastle hoping to equalise. Gibbons picks up on it again in that holding midfield position. Brushes past his man, but the referee blows his whistle again. No advantage, which Durham are disappointed about, but it's a free kick in their favour regardless. Protestations can only do too much in this. Well, yeah, they can only do so much in this situation, not too much. Gibbons plays it towards the right. Come on, picking up on it. Good pass there. And now it's Alpha Law here picking it up. Looks to put it on his left foot. Ollie England here. Plays oh, it across the block and oh. it's picked up by the Newcastle goalkeeper. Again, another chance for Durham. We seem to be grafting and working towards another goal, which would see them further towards those valuable three points. Now it's number 17 picking up on the ball on a yellow card still. It's not going away anytime soon. So no, no, it definitely is not. Early on in the match picking up on that. And Alpha Law, you know. A little bit of a scrap there. Trying to get it under his arm. 18 years old. He doesn't look like an 18 year old, does he? No, he does. He does not. He does not. No, he's a massive presence in that midfield. Pun intended, I suppose. <laughs> well, massive. Maybe. <laughs> That's a terrible pun, though. It's okay. I'll laugh, anyway. I'll laugh anyway. I'll laugh anyway. Not been sacked yet, though, so I'll keep <laughs> going with them. You'll have to endure them all night on PAL TV. Just waiting for play to get along here. Matt Keogh takes, sprays it towards the right hand side. Grillen doesn't decide not to challenge, but he picks up on the ball now anyway. Dances Good. past his man, but he doesn't get the legs and there's a bit of a Ooh. throw there. Man down there. Crowd not too happy with that one, but play continues here. Kamada plays it in. His it was lurking, but it didn't come towards him. Ooh. And it's a free kick uh. again in Newcastle's favour crowd getting very 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 impatient with the referee here yeah i feel like they are a bit disappointed by that they did want to see some they did want to see play to continue i will say would you say they've come here for football or the referee's whistle <laughs> hopefully a bit of both maybe <laughs> not hopefully a bit of both we want to see football <laughs> we want the drama though don't we oh of course those sorts of breaks also give us a chance to show you replays now and then so it's not all, all bad. It's gone out for a throw into Durham here on the left-hand side. I will say, though, Newcastle's defence have looked good so far. What do you think? Yeah, you can see why they're second in the table at the moment. There is something about them. It just doesn't seem to click all the time. And it is consistency that has been their issue throughout the season. It's the same for Durham, even though they're on the flip side of the table. However, they do have a game in hand. So, Although the table suggests one thing, Play suggests another as it's 1 0 still. Alpha Lai twists past his man, and again, Ooh, it's a great good pass up. by the number eight. The Newcastle, Newcastle here. Number 17. Nine with a brilliant spin, and he again he beats his man. He's put out to the left here. It's Newcastle. Pass in. To work something. And it ooh, whistles just wide. Not sure if Arnold knew. <laughs> just knew that was, was coming, yeah. Anymore. I mean, well, he hasn't had much to do, has he? No, maybe much just waking up slightly. Yeah. The late one. Anyway, he gets away with it on this occasion. It's a goal kick in Durham's favour. So Newcastle, you can see, are agitated to equalise. We've just seen how close they've come. Yeah, they're really showing off that bright kick with some bright play at the moment. There's momentum shifting in their favour. <laughs> another pun for you there. Another one, another one. DJ Khaled. <laughs> I'm full of them all night. All night. I haven't got the music, but I've got the puns. Please start, Please don't start singing for us. We oh, don't I need won't. that. No, no. That's not <laughs> what I'm on this uh, microphone for just yet. If things get desperate, then maybe, if you're lucky. <laughs> if there's a lull in the play, I'll just ask you to whip out your, your go-to karaoke song. Bust it out <laughs> for us. It's definitely going to be an Oasis tune. Definitely. Hopefully not Wonderwall, because I feel like that's a bit overdone. No, I can't stand Wonderwall. I can't stand it. <laughs> 
And now we're back playing. Oh, it seems to be an elbow in the back, but the referee's not seen it. And again, it goes out for a throw in. On this right side now, Newcastle. Not quite knocking on the door, but they are tapping. They are tapping, I will say. I don't even know if tapping is too too much of a presumption as well. Maybe. Number 17. Oh, and he's gone down there. Yeah, the crowd aren't too not too pleased with no, that. No, I did hear. There. Yep, you, you I can did. Hear the screen from here. Hopefully, uh, it's got no partners watching because it was quite embarrassing. He's got to be careful. I know yep. tempers are high, but doesn't want a doesn't want another card. No, nope. no. And he, he does seem to be capable of being a threat. It's a big presence up front. He's been on the ball quite a bit, the number 17. Does he's made some good runs as well. Yeah, he is getting in and about there. He did score a brace in the last game, so he knows where the net is. As Newcastle head towards Just the Just punched out by George. Can't be dealt with by George Arnold. And now they look to break with Quillen. He's got two men around him. He's zooming he's past. Control. He lifts it over. Oh. He's gone towards Hizit. He's going down towards Gibbon. Lost it towards Gulam in the box who goes down, can't quite get it. Still again, in going possession there. Calls for shoot. His it does, but it's blocked and it's gone out again. Great clearance by the Newcastle defence as he'll look to break now quickly. It's picked up rapidly by Rob White on that right hand side who beats his man again. Down the right side. He keeps going. Rob White who had the assist for the first goal towards Tom Hizit. He's brought down oh, and no. it is a free kick on that right hand side for Durham now. Rob White is still down. Hopefully he's okay. Seems to be okay. Just an elbow in the back, so no muscular or bone injuries there. Hopefully. What do we know? We don't do medicine. No. There must be <laughs> some underfloor heating on this pitch, though, because the players are staying down. They are on then. fire. They are mm. on fire. I see what you did there. <laughs> well, there is also great facilities here at Maiden Castle. All the money spent on it by the university. It's home to Durham winning, Durham Women Football Club. And earlier, if you joined us, it was Durham, Durham University women's who were playing against uh, Leeds Beckett. Great 5-0 victory for them. We did see a great game there. Lots of key players showing off their skill. Yeah, final match of the season as well. Good way to wrap it up. Definitely, as definitely. Finished fourth out of six in that league. Leeds Beckett finished on zero points. Minus 34 goal difference. And now it's whipped in by Durham. Comes towards Keogh, he didn't pick up it, and Quillen gets oh. it oh, and it's deflected just wide. Is it a corner? Yes, it is. Durham smashing down that door, looking to build what would be a second goal in this game. It does look very promising. A Durham corner as well. They could capitalise on that opportunity, Hopefully. maybe see a second goal here. They have been successful at set pieces so far, attacking set pieces, that is. And Gwillen will be, well, he's unfortunate with that chance. Yep. It's taken quickly. Gibbons a bringing quick it inside. Corner there. He's just brushed outside the box, but it's picked up here by... Ball is in. Oh, oh I just, just passed. Wide. They are really knocking down that door. Uh, head in hands for Freddie Merritt, who was inches away from that ball. Chances are coming, though. And it's always a positive sign if that's happening, isn't it, Davina? Definitely, definitely. You can see how much they want this. How much they want to keep the momentum going and score a second goal. And speaking before the match, Freddie Merritt, he was saying that it is a massive game for them. 11 years in this top flight, they want to keep, keep in it. They want to keep it that way. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, 10 years doesn't come easily. And now it's brought forward again by Jack Gibbons, who's been everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. He has shown what a key player he is, hasn't he? he is, yeah, he's like a tall and golo Kante. <laughs> And it is a free kick again as number 17 gets himself involved for Newcastle. Just over the halfway line. Crowd really building up. MC bars bustling. Seats. The vibes are spare. immaculate. Yeah, <laughs> they are immaculate. Yeah, it looks to be a few disputes about seats here at the moment. People look to settle down and get a taste of the action. Newcastle yeah. kicks it in. It's a great free kick. Oh, and it's not cleared properly there. And oh. it's a goal for Newcastle. George Arnold. Sorry. That makes it 1 1. Back post tapping. George Arnold just couldn't keep that out, could he? No, he'll be disappointed with that one. Yeah. After after coming so close, I feel like Newcastle had had a goal coming, I will say. Comes from a Durham mistake after that poor clearance there at the back post. 
They'll be disappointed with it, but they have had the chances. They're just not taking them, have they? Yeah, definitely. And I think this might light a fire underneath their feet. Maybe Perhaps see some more aggressive going. play. They do need to be more clinical up front as we settle down to what stands at 1-1 in this game. Durham's Durham still through. coming forward. Ollie England picks up on the ball, whips it in, in the box, and it's picked up by the keeper. Was spilt. It comes out to offline, but oh. he just can't get there. Cleared away by Newcastle. Another Rob White picks there. up on the right. Ah, and he just can't get control of the ball. But again, chances coming as number 17 comes forward. Can't get the ball. It's getting scrappy. Shoulders flying in, and it's again a free kick in Durham's favour after the referee blows his whistle. It's taken quickly. Ollie England. Spreading it in. Is it lurking? Can't pick up on it. Newcastle again with their with their good defence here. It's a great turn there. Oh, thunderous challenge by number eight for Newcastle. Who again, spreads it forward towards their attacking players, but it can't be picked up upon. And the referee blows for half time. Stands at 1-1 in this game after a great goal by Tommy Hizzet. And a late goal by Newcastle there on account of a Durham, Durham fumble, I would say. Yeah, it was a fumble. Not a proper clearance. Unfortunately. Anyway, we'll now go over to our halftime show. Hope you enjoyed the action so far. Ooh, Durham and seems to be in possession. Doing, trying to get, trying to get a spell on the ball. They pushed it, it forward. Forward. There we go. It, in the box. In the box. On oh, it. Just it's just behind Tom. Is it goes out for a corner. Durham hopefully, hopefully, can capitalise on this. Rob White bringing it forward here, racing. He's got the afterburners on, and he looks to clip it this towards the back chance. post. And it's a brilliant goal there by Tom Hizzet in the back goal. post. Who what nods down and takes the lead for Durham. Clean and composed. Clean and composed. That is what Rob we want. Rob White with a brilliant ball into the back post. Tom Hizzet was there expecting Ollie England behind him, but Tom wasn't missing that one. Newcastle kicks it in. A great free kick. Oh, and it's not cleared properly there. And oh. it's a goal for Newcastle. That makes it 1-1. Back post tapping. I really enjoyed that first half. I thought that uh, it was quite even. And when Durham went ahead, they definitely had the best of the play at the time. So they definitely deserved it. Um, so it's a real shame to see uh, Newcastle score an equaliser towards the end for, for Durham. But um, yeah, it, it, considering the, the gap in the table between the two teams, we're seeing a really nice derby so far. Yeah, it was thoroughly entertaining. Uh, as it was a derby, there was a, a quite a lot of foul play in there, but it's made for an entertaining game. Set pieces have played a big role, and it's just been great. Yeah, you mentioned there it's obviously the North East derby, Durham versus Newcastle. There's a lot riding on it for both for both teams, really. It's a derby, and of course, Durham need to win these games, really, if they want to stay up. Did you see that sort of aggression out there tonight? Yeah, as I said, it definitely felt as though uh, both sides need something out of this game. Uh, as, and Durham are... Uh, trying to avoid relegation at the moment. They're two points from safety as it stands and they play relegation rivals Loughborough next week so it's an important one for them. Yeah, as you say, uh, Derby's are scrappy anyway and then if you add the relegation fight into it as well, you, 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 you know, you're in for a game with lots of fouls and we did see that in the, within the first 10 minutes quite quickly. Um, this, this game last year was very similar. We saw a red card there as well. Uh, so yeah, I, I agree. It's, uh, it's been a very scrappy game but uh, it's been made for very good entertainment. And of course, it's it's still a draw. It's one all. There's still plenty to play for in the second half. If you guys were the coaches in the changing rooms right now, what would you be saying to your sides? If we start with Durham, um, I'd definitely say more of the same. Um, they're doing they're doing really well against a team that are much higher in the table. So um, yeah, more of the same and uh, and keep finding those gaps up front because they're, they're doing well and look, look like scoring. Yeah, as Joe said, I would be encouraging them to keep doing the same because. They were the better side there, they had the best of the chances, and if they keep playing like that, they will win the game. Now, actually, there's time for one more quick question. So take us through that first goal. Obviously, it was a delicious ball into the box to finish it off by what you call, you call the utility player. Yeah. How impressed were you with that goal? Oh, it was a fantastic cross, finished off well at the back post by Hizzet. Uh, that would have been what Durham are practicing in training, and it's great to see it come off in a game. Yeah, it was absolutely textbook, um, and Rob White's been excellent on that right-hand side, and the cross-in was was perfect. Great run at the back post by Hizzet, um, excellent player. And as Mike mentioned, this is this event is in aid of an, a brilliant charity, and we're going to run a clip now for you to learn some more about it. This year, Durham University Amateur Football Club is hosting a charity match to raise money for sport in action.
Sport in Action is a non-governmental organization with a mission statement of endeavoring to use sport and recreation as a tool to improve the quality of children's lives by providing a program that will bring about motivation, self-development, and self-reliance. Let's meet some of the players and find out what Sport in Action means to them. So Sport in Action is the main charity that Team Durham decided to work with for the past few years uh, through all their charity events. Sport in Action is really important to me personally because I feel like the um, skills that they are driving on with the individuals in uh, Zambia are really important for life going forward and they can develop their own communities after uh, we leave. Uh, so, you know, being determined, being resilient that you gain through playing sport is really important. I did some charity work a couple of years ago with a charity that's similar to Sports in Action. I've seen first hands the work that they do. So, Sport in Action is, you know, a fantastic initiative and one which I fully support. I was uh, lucky enough to go to Zambia uh, with Sport in Action this summer uh, and spend some time with the, the charity, the organisation, um, the coaches there, which is Primarily what they're there for is to um, help and influence and train the, the coaches to get better. So it's so important for us in, um, in England and um, th well throughout all the universities who take part in Sport in Action. I think it's really important that we maintain the relationship that we have over there to not just let it be something that a couple of people did for a few years and then let it go. Mm. Of course, it's a brilliant charity and there are so many ways that you can get involved. You can go on their website, Volunteer Zambia or Sport in Action. And that charity is really what most of the crowd are here for tonight and they're definitely playing their part in the game. How have they contributed so far? Yeah, we've seen great noise from the crowd so far. People have been filing in as we've been as we've had our coverage on tonight. Um, I mean, if you look at the the last time they played each other, when they played each other in Newcastle in November, um, it was a 3-1 win for Newcastle, but much more even game going on here so I definitely think they are making a difference. Yeah it's all important in a game like this uh, where it's, it's a close it's a relegation battle for Durham and to have the crowd supporting them here it means a lot and it will drive them on to win today. In terms of the second half finally poised 1-1 they were a tiny bit lucky getting that goal at the end but what do you think about the second half then? Are we going to see a few more goals and who do you think might come out on top? Uh, I think Durham will definitely be do looking to do more of the same we might see some changes from Newcastle to try and swing the momentum uh, but yeah, I think hopefully more of the same in terms of an entertaining game. How would you sum up the season so far and what have been the highlights? Personally, I'm the goalkeeper for the first team and we started off fairly well, I'd say, uh, especially compared to last year and then we beat Notch Trent here 2-1 at home uh, to get our first win of the season. It's really propelled us on to uh, do some great things. Uh, looking at the rest of the squads, the twos have started with a 100% record, which is unbelievable, and what we expect, and we're really pushing on for them to get promoted this year. And the threes, uh, it generally works out that they start off pretty poorly is the wrong word, but you know, getting to know each other, getting to gel as a team, and in their last game they won 10 nil, so I think they've finally done that gelling. When I say the highlight for me this season was probably our victory over Notch Trent, um, especially our second goal. Uh, the football played and the lead up to that was what we're all about and what our head coach tries to implement here at the university. Yeah, I think we're gathering a bit of momentum now. I think we're um, after Christmas we'll be coming back stronger and I think the best highlights are still to come. What are you looking forward to with the clash with Newcastle? Um, I know for the ones that um, it's a massive game. They've got three games left um, and it's basically three cup finals. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the game. Uh, it's a huge game and yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll win. Yeah, we've played them already this season and we got uh, we got messed up a bit by the referee. So we're looking to get a bit of payback, a bit of revenge, so it should be a good game. Is there anything you want to say to the people watching at home? Uh, well, thank you for watching and hi mum and dad. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, best of luck to all the boys when we go out for the second half. Any support is you know massively appreciated, so please get behind the lads. I hope you're enjoying the game. Um, we're going to try and bring the win home and yeah, get the three points, you know what I mean? Welcome back and it's uh, my, I'm Oliver, one of your commentators. And I'm Davina, sorry we didn't introduce ourselves earlier. <laughs> <laughs> and we're here to bring you the second half in this enthralling game between Durham and Newcastle, which currently stands at 1-1 after a great goal by Tom Hizzett at the back post at the start of the half and an own goal on Durham's behalf, after a disappointing clearance at the end of the half. Newcastle did get lucky there, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Game of lots of halves. <laughs> <laughs> half clearances, half shots. But half the chances. Name, yep. But Durham will be chasing a win as we go into the second half. 
are looking to stay up in what is a tight, tight, tight Aldi Northern Premier League at the moment. And here and we go off. with kickoff. Jack Gibbons booting it towards the front line. And we're back as back where we started, really, when it comes to headers, flying challenges, and the referee's whistle. Is it Newcastle with the ball here? It's a free kick on this left side. Ball still rolling. And now it's stopped as they look to take it. Looking to build something here in Newcastle. They Not are, they'll definitely, they'll want to prove themselves, won't they? Because I don't think they'll accept that own goal as being their only goal of the night. No, they definitely can play better than that as the league table shows with their second place at the moment. However, Durham can. And Durham will hope they can during this second half. There's definitely all to play for. And if Bragging rights are on the line. Of course, North East Derby, and it's much more than that as well. If you're just joining us, Durham currently stand at the bottom of the league. Oh, and the, racing away on this left-hand side. It's Gwillen bringing it forward. It goes down. And it's number seven with a great finish. Beautiful great counter-attack. The players race to jump on him. And it the is crowd goes wild. You can feel the energy today. The crowd have really backed the boys. It was a fantastic finish there in the centre by, it appears to be Tom Hizzet, number 11. And it's 2-1 to Durham in what could be an invaluable goal in the Aldi Northern Premier League. I think this really proves that. I mean, the, the, t the league table may say one thing, but on the pitch, you know, there's all to play for. It was a great run by Gwillem, who scored in the last fixture. Racing in to finish off was Tom Hizzet. Crowd absolutely loved that. Compose lofted over the goalkeeper who had no chance, no chance of stopping that one. A good ball in, a good finish. Brilliant counter attack all in all. I think Durham have been very good at the quick turnarounds in terms of making use of Newcastle's mistake in capitalising on them and then pushing forward. Oh, definitely. They've got pace to burn and they are exploiting that in every way possible. Both flanks being exploited. And now it stands at 2-1 to Durham as a result. We do see a Newcastle player down, though, on the far side. Not sure what's going on there. Not sure who it is either. Must have been in the aftermath of the goal or just beforehand. Look, and he seems to be in quite a bit of discomfort. Medic's on the pitch. He does seem to be in pain. Goalkeeper is also down. He's got up now. <laughs> must have been during the shot. Goalkeeper racing out. Defender coming in, do you think? Yeah, it must be. I'm not quite sure what else it could have been. Or maybe they got caught in... Caught in a scuffle. I'm not sure. Must be. Must have been studs flying. Anyway... Now it's time for them to take the kickoff. 2-1 down now, Newcastle, after that brilliant goal by Tom Hizzet, who now is a brace in this match and is on a hat-trick. See if they can keep hold of it. As Newcastle, Newcastle look to come forward with an immediate response. It's broken apart by Matt Keogh, cleared away by Freddie Merritt. <laughs> Goes out for a throw in as Durham look to just... Make sure things are nice and calm and in their favour in this match. Jack Kamada to take this throw in. It's throw. Good throw in. Yeah, it's a long throw, that one. Picked Definitely been in the gym. <laughs> Definitely been hitting those arms. Yep, Jack Gibbons lofts it forward. It's a solid header by the Newcastle back line. However, they do come forward now through Rob White, who slips it towards... Who was that? He's number eight. Maxim Garagic. Good defence there by Durham. Yeah. Doesn't come to much. Newcastle do seem to be pushing a bit here. Yeah, they're starting to expand play. Something they'll hope to do. So they try to keep the ball on the ground and in their favour. But they do need to watch for these counter-attacks. As Freddie Merritt blasts the ball against the Newcastle attacker. It goes out for a throw in, in Durham's favour. Throwing to be taken now by Ollie England, whose brother's on the bench, watching eagerly, hoping to come on at some point. Hopefully on the edge of a seat. Yeah, he's been it has been a good game. 
He's been scoring plenty for uh, Durham United to have a new partnership. As Newcastle look to come forward and it hits the side netting. It's a goal kick. They can protest all they like, but the referee seems to be decided. Goal kick, nothing more. George Arnold here with the goal kick. Somehow keeping warm in this very, very cold weather. If you do hear us chattering away, um, I think that's a testament to how cold it is. Yeah, it is ridiculous. The wind isn't blowing too much, which is uh, one saving grace. But once it starts, there'll be no stopping my teeth jittering. I'm not sure about you, Davina. No, yep, same. And there we go. The pole getting in on the action as Newcastle looks to take a quick throw in, but the referee's not happy with the positioning. And it's played back towards their left back. There's a Newcastle throw in here. Lots of communication on that back line. Matt Keogh with a solid header. But the ref's blown his whistle yep. again. Referee's blown his whistle. He loves that whistle, the referee. <laughs> loves to make his present known. Mm. He must know the cameras are watching. Putting on a show for PAL TV. Who wouldn't? <laughs> it's Jack Kamara to take this throw in. Oh, it's a free kick even. Hard to keep in touch with the referee's decisions. Been so many during this match. It's played four towards Gwilym, who doesn't win in this occasion. Matthew Pennington coming out of successor, but he picks up on the ball anyway. Looks to race towards the box, plays it across the box, and it just evades the Durham attackers who are racing in, trying to get that, what would be, well, <laughs> how to describe that third goal if they do get it. <laughs> that would have been another goal, wouldn't it? Have... have well, if it went in, it would have been another goal, obviously. But I think it shows promising effort on Durham's It is Durham's much more than a goal in these circumstances. Survival would mean the world to Durham in this situation. But Newcastle will keep coming. They're not going to put their uh, gauntlet down just yet. I don't know whether to say they're putting pressure on Durham right now because... They do seem to be coming forward. Oh, well, they're not at the moment as Gwillem comes forward. And he's taken out there by the Newcastle defender. The crowd are on the feet protesting. The referee strides over. It's going to be a card, but which one will it be? He seems to have got out his yellow. I have a feeling it is going to be a yellow. It ought to be. Not sure what the crowd thinks about that. Well, they've settled down slightly, not just raced on the pitch, but the sentiment was there. I have a feeling if the ref didn't run up, there would be some protest here. And he's having a word with the Newcastle defender here. Taking his name, jotting it down. We haven't seen too much of a rowdy game, but we have seen some moments where tensions have just tipped a little bit over, perhaps. Well, he definitely, the number three there for Newcastle, picks up the card. He is in the bad books now, and he definitely wasn't going for the ball in that situation. Shoulder stone forward, ball rolls beyond him. Cynical challenge, but it's a free kick to Durham now. We'll hope to capitalise on the opportunity. It was a great counter-attack there also for Gwilym, who has been a bright spark in this game for Durham. Hillbead youngster, also 18 years old. He's had one start before this match with two goals. So he appears to be prolific. I don't know whether it's just me, but all these 18-year-olds look very tall. Too tall to be 18. Or maybe that's just because I'm really short. No, oh, it must be something in the water. <laughs> yeah, these counter-attacks are very, very, very... Good for Durham at the moment, with Newcastle having a man down. Durham hoping to capitalise on this free kick, mm. get another goal in. Yeah, once they're allowed to take it. <laughs> it really is working, I think. <laughs> Only the best facilities here at MC. Well, it's a shot there, wall block it, and it goes out for a corner. It was that number wall two. seemed indestructible <laughs> there. <laughs> And it was Jack Kamada who took that free kick there. It was a rasping shot curling, but it wasn't beating the tall men of Newcastle. who have trotted down from the Angel of the North today under the watchful eye of the cathedral. Durham's brilliant cathedral. Very poetically uh, yeah, said. very, very poetic. Hey, they were using their heads there, weren't they? There <laughs> we go, um, we got a pun in. 
<laughs> Davina's getting in on the act now. Uh, it's a corner whipped in towards the centre. Cleared rather assuredly by Newcastle. As Rob White looks to pick up on that. But he can't. Number 10 blasts it out towards the crowd. Who, well, the crowd is, safe to say, dominated by Durham supporters tonight. Definitely bringing the energy. Mm. Supporting the boys. And supporting sport in action. Definitely supporting sport in action. No A problem. very good cause. Exactly. No problem with watching sport and getting charity involved as well. And Best Rob White of both looks worlds. to get it under his spell tonight. Newcastle here. Already got one assist to his name, Rob White. Who is a versatile right winger, as I've said before. That right foot can play anywhere along that right line. Do you think he's been one of your key players of the match? Yeah, that pace has been something they can really exploit tonight, Do He's been a brilliant performer. Newcastle opting to go with the short ball as they bring it forward. But they seem trying to, to find some space here, I think. Yeah, trying, but failing. No. Key word they're being trying. Yeah. Dysfunctional play so far by Newcastle. As Jack Gibbons again seems to wipe up whatever mess they leave in the midfield. And Jack Kamada sprays it forward towards Tom Hizzett. It doesn't quite get on the end of that ball. But the second ball breaks towards Al Falahi, who strikes with his left foot and it's blocked by the Durham defence. Uh, Newcastle, Newcastle defence. <laughs> City's that close. Easy to get mixed up. <laughs> of course, no one faults you. No one faults you. <laughs> We've got a bit of a shove there. Bit of drama going on. Again, more fracas. The ref seems adamant to use his whistle. We've already had one yellow card in this match for Newcastle's number 17, who, well, it doesn't appear to be on the pitch anymore. So that shows <laughs> just how significant yellow cards can be in the first half in a derby. Newcastle here kicking off. Half lie picks it up. That wand of a left foot, but he's blocked off by the Newcastle. Durham still have the ball, and it's sprayed again to the right wing for Rob White, who races, takes on his man, looks to find space for a cross, which he does find, but it's picked up by the Newcastle goalkeeper calmly. That was a good cross in, though. Those crosses are dangerous, aren't they? They are, they are. If only someone was there to just finish it off. And the first half they did with Tom Hizzett scoring his first at the back post after a brilliant Rob White cross. But this time there's a cross by Newcastle headed calmly away by Freddie Merritt. Newcastle still knocking on the door. Number 16 here for them. Plays it inside. Number eight. It's liquid football. Liquid descending into scraps as Newcastle clear. I would have gone with solid defending there, but okay. To each their own. To each their own. <laughs> Uh, too many studs involved for that. <laughs> so, chipped forward by Newcastle. The keeper calls for the ball. George Arnold picking up on that. He's got it undercover, hasn't he? He has. He doesn't seem phased at all. <laughs> no. Well, I wouldn't be a biology student. I'm sure he's seen worse. And again, it's a long ball towards Tom Hizzet, who ooh, ooh, almost picks up on it. But again, collected by the Newcastle goalkeeper. Very yeah. close call there. He's sniffing out his hat-trick, Tom Hizzet. Seems to find himself in the right place at the right time more often than not. Newcastle scrambling here. Again, it's picked up by Maxim Gregorovic. Nothing forthcoming this time for Durham. Can't have it all their own way. But the pressure continues. Alpha Lai chasing down his man. And it goes out again towards the River Weir, but <laughs> this time the fence preventing the ball from going too far. I don't think the team's budget can really uh, afford Take too many balls hits. being lost tonight. Yeah. <laughs> they seem to be coming from all different directions, though, so I, I don't think they're going to fall short on any balls soon. Yeah, there's definitely been a word before the match towards, uh, well, not ball boys, but whoever's around. Definitely. Throw it in, get the tempo going, get these goals <laughs> and get those three points. That seems to be the game plan for Durham tonight. Throw in there by Newcastle. Just down and that do right side. Towards number nine. Newcastle so still going. Durham defender brought down, but the referee blows his whistle. There are protestations. Jack Gibbons is not happy with that decision. No, they are not. They are still shouting players running over. There's a Durham player down, and it appears to be Freddie Merritt. 
He's been solid at the back tonight alongside Matt Keogh, uh, who has come back after, as mentioned before, his 16-month ACL injury. Seems like they've found a diamond at the back, Durham, as they approach what's... Uh, what, well, they are the last few minutes of the season, aren't they? With Loughborough coming up on the 1st of February next week, 3pm kickoff, final game of the season as Durham look to stay up in the division. Definitely. At the moment, they have to face this free kick by Newcastle on the right-hand side. They are looking to continue this momentum. Two goals in hand. Time will tell whether they can keep them on, on top of it. Keep it that way. Newcastle with the kick. Both benches on the feet, ready to watch this one. As it appears to be an in-swinger. One arm aloft. It's crossed in deep. George Arnold picks up on it. Calm, assured, as he has been all night. Apart from that one lapse which led to the Newcastle goal, he has been solid and he hopes it can stay that way. He I'm pretty has. sure. What a player, what a game he's had. What a season as well. Four starts this season. Four starts in what appears to be a stellar season for him. Kamada. First time clearance. And again, Rob White picking up the ball on the right-hand side. He's dancing, he's dazzling, he's trying to beat his man back and forth. But unfortunately, this time it goes out for a Newcastle throw-in. And again, the Durham press almost leads to them picking up possession. Tom Hizit here, coming back. And helping his teammate, Maxim Gorogic, pick up the ball here. Unfortunately, it doesn't come to much as the referee's whistle again is blown and blasted into the ears of all those around at Maiden Castle. It's a quick free kick taken here by Newcastle. Trying to build up some form of possession, some form of consistent possession. They do have the ball, though, out front. Oh, Intercepted that there seemed by to be a, it's an unfortunate challenge there. No malice included, but the Newcastle number nine is frustrated with losing possession. We do have a Durham player down. Just catching his breath. Hopefully. Ah, but the medic's being called on here. Must be some underlying problem. Hopefully not, <laughs> nothing too serious. Hopefully However, it's not. never good to see the medic running on the pitch. Not quite sure who is down. Can't work out whether it's a three, five, or six, but it's something along those lines. <laughs> it appears to be number three, Ollie England, whose brother won't be too happy to see him on the pitch. <laughs> well, not down on, on the, the floor, pitch. Yeah, yeah. no, <laughs> definitely not. I mean, we can see the bench over there standing, looking over, kind of hoping everything is okay. Ollie England, who has played every game so far for Durham, not missed a minute. He's a John Snow student, 20 years old, engineering as well, so. Not much time on his hands, but all that time is used towards the efforts of Durham University AFC. You can see it's definitely paid off. I think he's definitely one of the key players we've seen tonight. Oh, of course. And I'm not sure if you can see it on camera at the moment, but there are fireworks going off behind him as well. It is Lunar New Year, the year of the rabbit now. Definitely. Kind of a cinematic experience that we're, we're seeing right in front of us. Exactly. Floodlights, crowds, no burger vans, but there are fireworks. The atmosphere is palpable. Ollie England back on his feet and he's racing back on. Injury not lasting too long for him. Eager to get those three points for the side. And he's staying straight back into the action now as Newcastle look to attack on the right. They do seem strong. It's a cross in, dealt, by, dealt with well by Jack Kamada. Number 16 for Newcastle picking it up as he looked to cross again. It's deep, it's towards number eight and it's flicked Ooh, just, just wide. Not sure if George Arnold had control of that, but well, it still remains 2 on for Durham as it, who take a quick goal kick now. That was a good ball in though, and I think it's the first chance Newcastle have gotten in a while. So perhaps it's an indication that they're not out of the game just yet. 
No, they won't rest on the laurels whatsoever when it comes to settling for a 2 1 defeat. They may not be able to move in the table, but a North East derby, well, their who pride is to on win the it? line here. <laughs> exactly. Throw in by Durham. It's a great touch there by number nine, but Jack Gibbons everywhere as usual, picking up on the ball. And there's a Durham defender down. Not sure if it was theatrics or an injury, but it appears to be theatrics, and it was Matt Keogh, so you'd hope he's not injured. He's had enough time on the medical table. And now it's Alpha Lahi bringing it forward. Durham look promising here. And he shoots, oh, oh and it rattles the crossbar. Cross bar. Can't pick up on the rebound, but the ball's still in Durham's possession. And it's gone in. It's gone in. What a goal. Finishes it off in the end. And it's Fink Willem. Two goals in two games now, or is it three? Three goals in th two. Three goals in two games. Two starts for Durham. And he's been magical tonight. What a man. What a finish. He was there when it mattered. Exactly. He was brilliant in the build for the second goal, and now he's got a goal to cap it off for himself. What a night he's had. 3 1 to Durham in this Northeast derby. Newcastle aren't happy, but, well, there's not much they can do about it apart from concede less. <laughs> or maybe well score said. more. Well said. <laughs> I think Durham here are looking in good shape if they continue this momentum. What do you think? Well, they're in charge. They're enjoying the roller coaster. They are. Everything's indeed. going in their favour, so not much to complain about here. Loving the celebrations that we can see on the camera here. Yeah, the crowd did love that one. Finn Gwillem, 18 years old now. Hillbead student and a regular goal scorer for Durham. That's what we need, isn't it? Exactly. It could be the reason why they stay up in the Aldi Premier North. Someone you can count on at the front to finish it off. And they want more. Jack Gibbons now on the ball. Plays it out wide to Ollie England. Plays it inside to Alpha Lahi. But it doesn't, it just about doesn't come to nothing. Newcastle now in possession. And now the attack down the right. Trying to build something get something Anything. back in this game and another player down and another play another referee <laughs> well the same referee blowing a whistle again we do seem to see a lot more bodies flying now late into the second half yeah this is getting it's not too feisty i guess not too feisty uh, not yet at, at moments least. it could have boiled over but you know it's remained in the pot for now both teams hopefully keeping a level head out there Trying to finish off the game on a high, at least on Durham's end. Exactly. Two yellow cards. Nothing red apart from the Newcastle kit. That's the way we want it to stay. Newcastle have this free kick now just over the halfway line. They need something now. Anything. A half chance, a chance, an own goal again. And they play it short towards the right. Chased down by his it. It's played inside and they fumble possession. There's a Newcastle shot, however. Shot. Ooh, Ooh, and it whistles just wide. It's number seven for Newcastle and it's gone for a corner. So there must have been a slight deflection on that one. I feel like that was probably a sign. They're definitely still in this game. Oh, they, they don't want people want to it. count them out yet. Mm. A lot of shouting that we can hear from the pitch. Trying to keep morale up. Yeah, business end of the season and business end of the game here at Maiden Castle. And it's whipped in deep. Too deep. Durham allow that to just roll, roll, roll and pass. roll away from their goal. Out for a goal kick. George Arnold will, well, he will be in no rush to take. No, he definitely won't. He's going to be enjoying this. He's got to be enjoying this from his end as well. Seeing all the goals. And he jogs lightly over to the other end of his six-yard box. White gloves, white socks. He's not shirt. sweating at all, is he? No. <laughs> Having a great game. It'd just be, it's a shame he's not got a clean sheet to his name because his performance has been brilliant. Composed, been. picking up on everything he's had to, apart from that one goal. The ball goes just out. Yeah, momentum slowly dying away. The ebbs and flows of a football match. 
taking full fruition. I mean, the boys must be tired as well, playing under the lights, out in the cold. But at least they've got the crowd behind them. Exactly, and they're trying to live up to the crowd that has come tonight. Not a spare seat. Even in this weather, it's good commitment. There Definitely a, a good turnout. Exactly, especially with a couple of floodlit cup matches going on as well. Newcastle throw in here. Jack Gibbons picks up on, but it still breaks in Newcastle's favour. He'll look to attack on the right now. Newcastle down the right side. They're trying to find some space, aren't they? Yeah, but there's Perhaps none to there. no avail, <laughs> yeah. You've got to make your own space in this game, and, well, it's not quite happening at the moment. Definitely. I think the Durham players have done so well with keeping, keeping with their man, kind of marking everyone, making sure no one gets away. It's a third now for Durham on the left side, headed away. A couple of 50-50s there, but no one injured. And there are calls for offside, and it's a late flag by the referee. That was quite late. I was mm. expecting that flag to go up quite early. Durham's offside chat working in their favour once again. They won't want to risk it too much, but they seem to be on it. Solid line. The free kick towards Rob White. Heads it inside. But the referee's whistle goes he once not, again. Not quite sure why. Uh, Didn't quite be, see that. Seemed to be shoulder to shoulder, but... Uh, it must have been something there. I mean, the referee is closer than us, so I'll give him the benefit of the doubt for now. Newcastle here. Slipping it inside, but George Arnold again sliding, picking up the ball. Nothing's getting past him. No, and he won't be picking up any mud either on this 3G pitch. Long ball again, which has worked quite well for Durham so far in this game. I would say so. I think Newcastle may be trying to emulate that. Here we go. Alpha well. Lai bringing it forward. He's hit the crossbar already. He wants that goal, but he slips it to his it, and it's in again. Oh. What a beautiful finish there by his it, who marks a hat trick with what is a splendid goal, an exquisite finish, rippling the back of the net there. The crowd goes crazy as well. They're on their feet. They love that. They knew it was his hat trick goal. I think they probably did. And now it's 4-1 in Durham's favour. They look to be fully in control of this game and setting well towards those invaluable three points. I definitely think the night's gone well for Durham. I don't think they could have asked for anything more so far. Their performance has been impeccable. It's a dream, ma dream night, magic night, under the floodlights in what, again, is a brilliant charity game at Maiden Castle. Bit of rhyming there for you. Our very own Ollie. <laughs> They had the 3-2 victory against Loughborough last year, who won the league. And again, racing towards a brilliant victory here. They do seem to want more, though. I don't think they want to stop. They want to keep keep scoring goals. Well, why would you? <laughs> May as well batter Newcastle whilst they're here. Newcastle are now dejected, and uh, it's damage limitation, it's safe to say, at this point. Yeah, the Newcastle side are looking a bit more tired, aren't they? It's a substitution now as number 12 comes on for Durham, Morgan Lant. He replaces Matt Keogh, who comes back after 16 months with an ACL injury. So he's given himself a great performance so far. Only conceding one goal against second in the division. Definitely a good game that he'll remember. And Durham's, a good game to come back to. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> I couldn't think of anything better. Bumper crowd, bumper performance. The oh, there's a the fight here. Again. Number eight, not happy with uh, Finn Gwillem, who's been picking up on everything, scoring everything, assisting everything. And the tempers are starting to flare now. They are. I mean, as we head into the the last last few minutes of the second half, not quite sure how much time we have left, actually. But the last end of the game, I think tensions are running a bit high, especially on Newcastle to perform. Maybe save face a bit. Well, of course, it's the competitive nature of any uh, university-level player coming out. 
There's always a bit too much in the kettle and it's definitely boiling over at the moment. Newcastle here on the right side, running down. Whipping it in. in. Oh, and it's a great clearance there by the substitute, Morgan Lant, number 12. Has been an authoritative performance by Durham tonight. Definitely playing up to the crowd and racing towards safety. I think it was pivotal as well that they got that first goal so early on in the game. Oh, definitely, definitely. You got the crowd up for it, got them up for it. Newcastle, well, they don't seem to want it at the moment. It's been those three points which could mean safety for Durham in the uh, Aldi Northern Premier. That is what we want to hear. Everything seems to be going Durham's way at the moment, and that's the way they want, want it to stay. That's the way the crowd wants it to stay as well. Yeah, we don't want those getting too unhappy. I mean, they paid the money. All for a good cause, sport in action. Well, I'd love to see what the revenue is for uh, Made in Castle Bar tonight. <laughs> in they must be racking up quite the tab. <laughs> yeah. Must have Moretti or something on, uh, on draft. Yeah, the only thing that you said you were missing was a pint, wasn't it? Exactly. Definitely going to get one after this game. <laughs> Before I lose my voice. <laughs> the best remedy. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what they got on draft, because there are plenty of options available, not just Moretti. Uh, this isn't an advert. I won't lie, I'm not a big pant pint fan. I'll, be, uh, I'll have to show you the ways at some point. Protestations once again. Referee not blowing his whistle, deciding to give it a bit of a rest, but it's a corner in Newcastle's favour. You look to try and gather some sort of hope, glimmer of hope. Yeah, trying towards. to close in on that goal <laughs> difference, perhaps. Maybe. It won't mean much for them as they will finish second in the division, but, you know, pride is everything. It's a left footed in swinger here. Corner Whip in. forward, but Morgan like getting his head on it. Rob White this time. Newcastle can't win anything. And it's cleared again. Forward. Breaking towards Finn Gwillem. I think we've seen this before. Could this be another goal? Passes it down. Just it's intercepted up. by Newcastle. Oh, if it wasn't for that offside, Durham would have been in again. Rolling out slowly, trickling, trickling. And it is... Throwing. Free kick. For Newcastle, Newcastle, deep in their own half. Again, Newcastle players looking a bit dejected here. Durham, on the other hand, building on that momentum. The adrenaline is flowing. The crowd, the crowd behind them. Yeah, the only bright glimmer of hope at the moment is the Newcastle kit. <laughs> Sorry, I just got that. <laughs> Took you a second. Too focused on the football. Yeah. Who wasn't appreciating the funds? <laughs> Who wouldn't be? It's been a great game so far. And there we go, referee's whistle making another appearance. If only I got a pound every time I mentioned it. Maybe the whistle should get MVP. I know, he hasn't yeah, played quite a bit this match. If I did get paid every time I mentioned it, I'd probably be able to afford my heating. <laughs> Whistle's blown. The, the goalkeeper seems to be hesitant to take the goal kick. Maybe doesn't want to concede a few more, but the game must be played. Show must go on. Some quick feet here. Newcastle with possession. Just does not seem to be breaking for them at the moment. No, it doesn't. Can't get it under control whatsoever. Long clearance now as they resort to Route 1 football, trying to get anything. They're really trying to pull at any straws they have, aren't they? Exactly. A crumb of hope. A bit of a goal. <laughs> Maybe. But Maybe. Must, surely only a consolation at this point in the game. You never know. They could pull in the Netherlands against Argentina. 
Yeah, they're, they're only missing Root Veghorst at this point. <laughs> Be down in Manchester at the moment. The six foot six striker. Seem to be shaping up for a shot, which from 30, 35 yards out, it's a peculiar decision. But maybe he's got something in his locker. It's going to be a right footed effort. And it is fired oh, whistle save. towards George Arnold in goal. Who doesn't catch it first time, but second time will do. Second time lucky. Again, he didn't seem to sweat that, did he? No. He almost expected it to come right at him. <laughs> it's a very calm presence in the goal. And it appears there's been a slight transition as Jack Kamada has gone to centre back. Rob White coming on onto right back. Versatile right back he is. Right back, right winger, right right mid, centre mid. He does everything. Say that ten times fast. <laughs> No oh, and that's a vicious challenge there. Yeah, Studs flying. Yeah. It's descended into chaos here in the centre of the pitch. The referee Play. goes over and, and it's a red, red card, card for the midfielder. Well deserved after what was a disgusting challenge. I think the crowd, crowd expected that almost. They are going a bit wild yeah, here. The, the crowd are enjoying the drama. I don't think the player down on the pitches. Let's hope it doesn't lead to any more. Players are congregating there though. Perhaps trying to make their plea to the ref. Even both it, both goalkeepers getting involved as well. Exactly. So but the card's gone for a bit up. Of warmth. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Keeps people warm, but no, you do feel for whoever it is that was on the results in end, well, the receiving end of that challenge. Definitely. It's horrible. I think he's still down actually. It's number eight it is. Down. Maxim Garagic. Who has had a great game alongside his teammates. The Cuffs boy. The ref was quite quick with that card as well, I will say. And now, marching off, the man who's been sent off for Newcastle, as you may be able to hear. The crowd, crowd cheering yeah. him on as he makes his way off the pitch. He'll be happy to be getting his, uh, well, it won't be a bath with these facilities. Be getting in the changing rooms, maybe a bit of heating, but it's maybe well deserved. Newcastle reduced to 10 men in this demolition Final. game. Definitely not something they needed, right? Newcastle, they were looking for goals and they lost a man. Yeah, they were looking for goals, but I don't think they're going to get one now. That's a vicious challenge. Not what you want to see on a football pitch, maybe even on a rugby pitch. It's too much. No reason for that challenge. No, I don't really know what he was thinking there, to be honest. Yeah, I was thinking... I I don't think he was thinking about the match anymore. Maybe he wasn't thinking at all. His own ego took control in that situation. Not what you want to see whatsoever. Durham here looking to capitalise on Newcastle with only 10 men left on the field. Garrigic seems to be okay. Back to his feet. He's been checked, to, checked in on. Won't want to lose him too soon. With next week's match against Loughborough at 3pm 3 3 at Maiden Castle. And the crowd seem to be cheering. Not too sure why. Not sure why either. Must be a snake involved there or something. We love the energy though. Well, they may as well. As long as the Mexican wave doesn't get involved, I'll be happy with it. Should, I mean, they have lots to cheer about. 4-1. Exactly. <laughs> We're winning 4-1. I think that gives them a right to, to go crazy. Yeah, but Mexican waves a step too far. Yeah. If Roy Keane was here, I don't think weather. he'd be happy with that. Oh, it's a brilliant flick back. Repertoire of tricks coming out now for Durham. Starting to flex every verb and muscle they've got. And who wouldn't use it? Who wouldn't use the box of tricks in this situation? Yeah, good point. I mean, they're still going. Look at their feet. I mean, I can't feel my toes anymore. No, I can't either. Yes. <laughs> uh, double layer of socks, everything. To no avail. Here we go. It's number 15 for Durham. Substitute. Oh, and now they're breaking Is there through. another finish there? No, unfortunately not. Number 15 for Durham, Eric Albany. Regular right back. Currently on the right wing. Yeah, 
Ball lofted forward, gathered up by Freddie Merritt. All England plays it inside. Jack Gibbons, calm, authoritative. Cool, Absolutely. calm and collected, I would say. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Three Cs. The ones that are important on a football pitch. The one you don't want to get is Ooh, the Ooh, that was... There's a risky challenge there by Matthew Pennington for Newcastle. Won't want to lose his head too early like his teammate did. No, Newcastle definitely don't want to lose another player. And George Arnold succumbing to the pressure there, but he's doing well. Well, he has done well. I mean, can't really take away from this performance by the young man. If Newcastle was struggling to make way earlier on with 11 men, I wonder how they're going to fare in this last end of the game with only 10 left on the field. Well, they're still fighting. They don't seem to be giving in anytime soon, but... I mean, it seems futile. Box of tricks for Durham, but Pandora's box for Newcastle. Everything's come out. Poor performance so far. It's Things not one to want to watch again. No, out, they won't yeah. be watching this recording, so <laughs> won't have to put up with our voices. Unlucky for them. Yeah, unfortunate. <laughs> for free as well. Exactly. exactly. Why All wouldn't of this. You? And our, our wonderful company. And you can hear it more if you subscribe. Subscribe to Pal TV. Exactly. Cheeky plug there. And here we go. Durham on the attack again. It slipped in. And again, 5-1. Another goal. A brilliant finish there. Cool, common collected again. Our celebration. Trickling into the bottom left-hand corner. Keith Rudd, well, he had a decision to make and he clearly made the wrong decision. Durham increasing their lead even further as we go into the end of the second half. Jogging back appears to have been number nine, the goal scorer, Finn Gwillem, who is now on a brace. I think the night's gone brilliantly for Durham, wouldn't you say? Oh, definitely. 5-1 against local rivals, especially Having when they're sitting second. lost last time as well. Exactly. They lost 3-1 in the reverse fixture, and they're definitely seeking revenge tonight. It appears to be the goal scorer was, in fact, number 14, Ned Ventum, substitute. So apologies for that, but visibility isn't too good at the moment on that far side. We both definitely don't have 2020 vision as well. No, Just yeah. putting that out there as a disclaimer. The glasses are in force at the moment. <laughs> this will do wonders for Durham's goal difference as well. As you look to climb up the table and out that relegation zone. I don't think Durham could have asked for a better, better end to the season. No, definitely not. And for next week, they'll hope to continue this rich vein of form. They're coming up for air now, and they're coming with a fight. And they want more. Here they, they come. Hungry. And he's brought down. That's surely a penalty, and it is. And it has been given. The ref's whistle. Finn Gwillen brought down. It has been a magnificent performance by the young man so far. Hillbead will be proud, watching on from afar. Newcastle really it's not been their night a red card a yellow card first then a red and now a penalty It is simply splendid to watch so if you're only tuning in you've missed out so far but stick with us because there's a penalty to come And he went for the Penenka Jack Gibbons the captain and well you may as well in this situation <laughs> When else would you try that? No risk. Just didn't get enough on it. But Newcastle won't be happy with that choice. And now they come racing forward with Matthew Pennington. England they University centre-back. They are rearing to get at least one more goal here. But again, Rob White picking up on it. He's been everywhere tonight as well as Jack Gibbons. Everywhere all at once. Here we go. Morgan Lamp bringing it forward for Durham. 
Morgan Lance Space as well, is appearing now as both sides seem to tire. And it's broken forward for Eric Albany, but he doesn't just, <laughs> he just misses out on it. Unlucky there on the far side. The crowd are loving this though. I don't know if it's the, if it's the points of the performance, but <laughs> you know. I mean, palpable. at least both are keeping them warm. Oh, exactly, yeah. I mean, I wish I had one hand at the moment. <laughs> to throw in now, long into the box. And it's a and goal. It's a goal. Brilliant Another finish one. there by Jack Gibbons who makes up for the Penenka who missed earlier. Audacious, exciting and brilliant. You can't at ask this for point, more. At this point, you just expect it, don't you? It goes down at that and then you're like, okay. Exactly. Captain Durham's Fantastic wrapping things up here for Durham to make it 6-1 on the night. 6-1. What, what a thing to say. Exactly. 6-1. There were nerves before this match, but they're well and truly banished now. Newcastle Durham kick off. Tired at all. What's the point? What's the point in carrying on after this? But Newcastle, Newcastle still down. chasing it down. They are chasing it down. They're not giving. <laughs> no, they are not giving up. They're getting uh, afterburners on. They're, they're trying. I don't know if it's a workout at this point. It might be reduced to a training match, but... Get those steps mm, in. Yeah. Getting those steps in, getting those miles in. At least in. the goals are flowing. If you've joined us from the start of this stream, you have seen some fantastic performances by Durham tonight. Some fantastic football. 11 goals. Rob White coming forward. Will it be 12? Finn Gwillen bringing it forward. Inside, outside, on his left. Oh. And almost gets it around the keeper who gathers. You can't have it all, can you? No, you can't have it all. That was beautiful football, though. We will keep trying. Durham again. Just trying to find some space here. And with the, with the, well, they do find it down the they right. They do find it. But it's full time. The crowd are delirious at the news. 6-1 Six Six on the night for Durham. Newcastle dejected, depressed, devastated. They're Durham out on the it. other hand. Second place, they might be in the league table, but Durham are on the way up. Durham, on the other hand, cool, calm, and collected. I think we're our three C's, right? Exactly. It's been a fun kiss on Burns night for Durham. A fun kiss indeed for the crowd. We hope you enjoyed that because, oh, well, I did. Well, I did. Demeanor. I definitely yeah. did. Thank you for tuning in with us. We exactly. hope you've enjoyed it. And don't leave just yet because we do have a bit of a debrief coming from our uh, experts on the track. Our pundits and our pitch side presenters will be with you shortly. Exactly. The crowd are getting up and heading to the bar, but you don't know just yet. <laughs> I mean, there's lots to celebrate. There's lots to celebrate. I feel like a night out tonight, probably well deserved. Exactly. The nightclubs are going to be flowing tonight. Absolutely so will the drinks, won't they? It's a Books Wednesday and it's a brilliant Wednesday in Durham. Handshakes are plenty, slaps. I mean, it may have been a North East derby, but the bragging rights have definitely come in Durham's favour at the end. It definitely has. It definitely has. Derby demolition for Durham. What a way to finish the game. What a way to end the season as well. I think it's definitely a boost in morale for the boys. Exactly. Final game coming up next week against Loughborough at 3pm, Maiden Castle. Be there or be square. It's I was tough. just going to say that. Well, I'll beat you to it. The puns keep coming. The, the puns, puns keep get, coming. The puns will not end. And if you want to see more puns, keep with us because that post-match debrief is on its way. What was your favourite point of the match? I mean, there were six goals to choose from. Which one do you think was your favourite? I'm not too sure, to be honest. Uh, the Penenka was quite funny, but from a... <laughs> That final goal wrapped it up really. Jack yeah. Gibbons getting in on the act. I mean, it's well deserved. He had an outstanding performance. I mean, there's Water and then there's Jack Gibbons. I'm not sure what covers more, but, you know, <laughs> he does well to compete. He does. He definitely does. I think I'm going to go on the opposite end here and say my favourite goal was the first one. The first one. Right well, the it did get things going, didn't it? It really definitely. set the tone for the night. A beautiful cross in, a nice finish. Tom Hizzett there at the back post, nodding it down. As the players slowly trickle off the pitch now, they will be celebrating tonight. Heroes I don't want to know Durham. what Heroes that change. Of Durham. I, I don't. Of our I don't want to be cleaning that changing room afterwards because no, it I will be mad. The atmosphere in the changing room tonight must be palpable. 
Exactly. Smells are plenty. Get those tunes in. Get some dancing in. Lots to celebrate. Exactly. The hats are off. Hats, whether they be, I don't know, bubble hats, <laughs> caps. The hats are off. The gloves are off, too. The hat trick's on, maybe. Uh, and now we've got an interview coming with Ruben, the club captain, Ruben Bull. It's a marathon, not a sprint. And we're going to try and bring the win home. It should be a good game. to our broadcast with PAL TV. What another amazing win for Durham. We're here with club captain Ruben. Ruben, how are you feeling about the game? Oh, absolutely excited. Going into the half at 1-1, we were a bit nervous, but the boys put on a fucking show. Oh, I said I wouldn't swear. I'm sorry. The boys put on a show. So cheers for viewing, guys. Yeah, really amazing work. You've got one game left this season. How are you feeling about that? Uh, can't help but be positive after today. Loughborough coming up. They've just drawn two all against uh, Nottingham. So we're going to try and do the business again. That's so excellent. Well, it was a great game. I do want to remind our viewers at home that this is a charity match for Sport in Action. So if you can, please do donate. More on that now. This year, Durham University Amateur Football Club is hosting a charity match to raise money for Sport in Action. Sport in Action is a non-governmental organization with a mission statement of endeavoring to use sport and recreation as a tool to improve the quality of children's lives by providing a program that will bring about motivation, self-development, and self-reliance. Let's meet some of the players and find out what Sport in Action means to them. So Sport in Action is the main charity that Team Durham decided to work with for the past few years uh, through all their charity events. Sport in Action is really important to me personally because I feel like the um, skills that they are driving on with the individuals in uh, Zambia are really important for life going forward and they can develop their own communities after uh, we leave. Uh, so, you know, being determined, being resilient that you gain through playing sport is really important. I did some charity work a couple of years ago with a charity that's similar to Sports in Action. I've seen firsthand the work that they do. So, Sport in Action is, you know, a fantastic initiative and one which I fully support. I was uh, lucky enough to go to Zambia uh, with Sport in Action this summer uh, and spend some time with the, the charity, the organisation, um, the coaches there, which is primarily what they're there for is to um, help and influence and train the, the coaches to get better. So it's so important for us in, um, in England and um, well throughout all the universities who take part in Sport in Action, I think it's really important that we maintain the relationship that we have over there to not just let it be something that a couple of people did for a few years and then let it go. Mm. This second half turnaround for, New for um, Durham against Newcastle. Last time they played, Newcastle beat Durham 3-1. Guys, what inspired that turnaround in the second half? Well, it was just a really, really strong start in the second half. Um, the start in the front foot, the link-up play between the front two was just absolutely excellent. Obviously, a hat-trick from Hizzet and linking up each time with Gullum. Um, so yeah, and then obviously the red card definitely changed things. It was six in the end. It could have even been seven after the penalty miss. So yeah, um, I, I don't know what it was, but I think that yeah, just started in the front foot and started as they went to me as they went to go on. Yeah, well, the crowd will have certainly helped today. Uh, it's good to see so many people turn out, uh, and I think as we say, his it was a difference maker. Alpha Lahi also an honourable mention, uh, creating two of those goals. But yeah, it was a great half for Durham. Yeah, you mentioned the, the red card there. Do you think that the frustration got to the Newcastle players in the end when they were about 4-1 down? Yeah, it's possible because it, there were quite a lot of fouls and in that situation, a tackle in the middle of the park, both studs showing, it really left the referee with no choice and it, I think it did show the frustration. Earlier this week, one of our reporters went down to training and met up with some of our players. I 
How would you sum up the season so far and what have been the highlights? Personally, I'm the goalkeeper for the first team and we started off fairly well, I'd say, uh, especially compared to last year and then we beat Notch Trent here 2-1 at home uh, to get our first win of the season. That's really propelled us on to do some great things. Uh, looking at the rest of the squads, the twos have started with a 100% record, which is unbelievable and what we expect and we're really pushing on for them to get promoted this year. And the threes, uh, it generally works out that they start off pretty Paulie is the wrong word, but you know, getting to know each other, getting to gel as a team, and in their last game they won 10 0, so I think they've finally done that gelling. And I say the highlight for me this season was probably our victory over Notch Trent, um, especially our second goal. Uh, the football played and the lead up to that was what we're all about and what our head coach tries to implement here at the university. Yeah, I think we're gathering a bit of momentum now. I think we're um, after Christmas, we'll be coming back stronger, and I think. The best highlights are still to come. What are you looking forward to with the clash with Newcastle? Um, I know for the ones that um, it's a massive game. They've got three games left, um, and it's basically three cup finals. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the game. Uh, it's a huge game, and yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll win. Yeah, we've played them already this season, and we got uh, we got messed up a bit by the referee. So we're looking to get a bit of payback, a bit of revenge. So it should be a good game. Is there anything you want to say to the people watching at home? Uh, well, thank you for watching and hi mum and dad. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, best of luck to all the boys when we go out for the second half. Any support is you know, massively appreciated, so please get behind the lads. I hope you're enjoying the game. Um, we're going to try and bring the win home and yeah, get the three points, Johnny. Welcome. Are we... Hi. I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who watched our stream and more importantly a huge thank you to, well not more importantly, but a huge thank you to our team. This would not have been possible without everyone. We have people from all aspects of PAL. Great work to everybody. We're so proud of what we did and we hope you guys will subscribe and tune in to our next live stream. We have DUCFS coming up on February 18th. Super exciting. So yeah, subscribe and watch our lives. Thank you, bye! bye.